Now, we're going to look at the readings. And we're going to start with the first reading, Isaiah 61. It is such a beautiful reading. And you can see how the hope that Israel had, you see, we still have, but in a fulfilled way. Let me try to explain what I mean. There's a text in Hebrews, I quote it all the time, it's Hebrews 10.1. The nomos, the law, having a skia, a shadow, a sketch of the good things to come, but not the very icon of the realities. So you've got three stages. The, the, the skia, the sketch, the uh, icon, and the realities. The first, the sketch is the Old Testament, the icon is the New Testament, and the realities is heaven. I, when I first saw this, I thought I'd discovered something. And then I saw it in about ten different fathers of the church. I figured I wasn't as original as I first thought. But it's still true. You see? Uh, so, there's a sketch, and then uh, it, there's an icon. Now, an icon is a re the reality but in another form of existence. It's not in the form of existence proper to itself. Our life with God is iconed in our life in the church, but it's not heaven, which is when it says, see, the very icon, that's us, of the realities, the pragmata, that's heaven. The realities. Again in chapter 11, see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the hypostasis, you see, evidence of which still we don't have the whole evidence, because that's when we see God. Okay, so this Isaiah 61, you see, is a text, as you know, uh, quoted by uh, St. Luke. The way that the different gospel writers have different ways of opening up our Lord's public life. Uh, Luke uh, is in the synagogue and uh, he reads this text. They hand him the scroll, if you remember. And um, I'm sorry, it's not, of course, it's not chapter one, it's chapter three. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Now, let me just find it for you. Uh, um, okay. It's, um, I'm, I'm wrong, it's in chapter 4. Jesus is in the synagogue. And he starts exactly where we start. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Huh? The Ruach Adonai Alai because he has anointed me. And of course, the word there uh, in Hebrew is Mashiach. That's where we get Mashiach, which is the passive of Mashiach, the anointed one. He anointed me, Adonai, anointed me. Le baser anavim. Baser, we've done that a few times. That's to announce good news. You know? Uh, the guy is waiting outside and if somebody comes out and says, it's a boy, Basar. And the the person bringing that news is the Mubasar. That's where we find that great phrase in Isaiah 52. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of this one bearing the Basar. I think we just had it recently here in our, in our work here. And I think it's, but you see, a how beautiful the feet. What's that? It's a blessing on the feet of the man bringing this good news. It's like if you do a favor for somebody, you know, help an old woman across the street. Uh, in Arabic, the woman may turn around and say to you, it's lemedech, may God bless your hands. You see, it's a blessing on the feet. Okay. Uh, so, to the anavim, who are they? They are the poor. Well, who's poor? The people who know they're poor. It helps if you're physically poor because then you kind of know you're poor. But 
if you're physically poor and just yearn for all the hump in this life and don't, then you're not poor. See, a poor man is somebody who cultivates the experience of being dependent on God. That's the poor one. Stays away from stuff that would insulate them from experiencing their total dependence on God. Am I clear? See, that's why Jesus says, blessed are the poor. Because, And that's a, a declaration coming from this text. The poor, the mourning, they're all right here in this uh, uh, Isaiah 61. The blessing is that I'm here. <clears throat> and those who will most profit by my being here are the poor. Those who know they're poor. That's why Matthew says, poor in spirit, which is, a, is a, an expression you can find at Qumran, at the Dead Sea. It means somebody who really knows they're poor. Like the man in the back of the temple, remember? Uh, I have to go on now, but you remember that. The guy in the front, I thank you, Lord, I'm tired, I fast, I'm great. And the guy in the back doesn't even raise his, he's a crook, he's a tax collector, he's an extortionist, and he knows it. So he's in the back, if I give this up, I'll never get a job. If I keep it up, I'll be hated by everybody. I'm in a bind. So he's in the back of the church without a prayer. And he says, Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And if you can catch the tone of our Lord's voice, feel the movement of his heart when he says, That one went home justified. That's what he's talking about here. You see? Uh, to the Anavim. Uh, sent me to bring glad tidings, the basar, to heal the brokenhearted. People who, you know, life is hard and their heart gets broken. Now, these are exiles too. We're, you know, they don't even, we're, we're up in this land. They're making fun of us. We lost the war. They took us away. We're prisoners up here or we're, you know, exiles up here. And... Uh, you know, we can't even eat our own food. We can't, you know, we're, we're strangers. And uh, the brokenhearted. But there's another aspect to it, right? Again, in uh, Psalm 51, huh? uh, you, uh, 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 you do not despise a broken heart. See, a broken heart is somebody who's not full of himself. Yeah. A crushed heart, a broken heart. Does that make somebody a wimp? No. It makes them totally dependent on God and willing, because then they don't think they're so important that they can't be put to trouble. They'll go and risk to help other people. Okay. And release to the prisoners. Announce a year of favor from the Lord. Huh? A day of vindication of our God. And then the our, our reading ends there at uh, verse 2 and skips down to verse 10. Uh, they want to get as much of the theme in as they can. I wish they could have put those first those verses in there. Well, they didn't. I rejoice heartily. Shu Sashim. Rejoicing. I rejoice in Adonai. You see? In my God is the joy of my soul. He has clothed me with a robe of salvation, wrapped me in a mantle of justice like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem. I was recalling recently how this text, you know, Shus Ashim, Ashish, uh, it's translated in the Vulgate as Gaudens Gaudebo in Domino. That's the, 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 the theme song of the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. You see, when Our Lady was aware all of a sudden, still in the womb of her mother at some point, that she'd been so blessed by God, she burst forth in this song. You know, uh, Shus Ashish Badonai. She realized how blessed she is. Now the people, all of us, are sharing in that, you see. Robe of salvation, a mantle of justice, a bridegroom adorned with a diagram, diagram, diadem, a bride bedecked with her jewels, 
And then this mysterious attribution of uh, God's causality. As the earth brings forth its plants and the garden makes its growth spring up, so the Lord, Adonai, God, makes justice, okay, and praise uh, spring up before all the nations. Justice and praise. That's fidelity to God, huh? honoring the truth of the relationship. You need soil. You need something to produce this. But it's God who does the producing. You see? Now, in a way, and we have this in Psalm 84, 85. Our earth has produced its fruit. Tell me, when did our earth produce its fruit? When Jesus was born. Mary sort of sums up all our earth and all the people of Israel and gives birth. You see? And so that's the, the, the reading we have. Now, we don't have a psalm today, but we have the Magnificat. Our Lady's Song of Joy and Gratitude. My soul magnifies, makes great the uh, uh, the greatness of the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You hear the echoes of uh, Isaiah, I hope. You see? My spirit rejoices. Why? All of a sudden, I realize my body is the place from which the Lord is going to make justice spring. From my body is going to come the righteousness of God, my son. You see? Because he's looked on the humble estate of his handmaid. Behold, they will bless me all following generations. What's that? That's the blessing of Abraham landing on Mary, right? I will make you great. Nations will bless themselves in your name and you be as blessed as Abraham. And now we say, May you be as blessed as Mary. You see? It's a... Uh, and she knows that. And she's saying, this is all God's work. It's not my work. You see? And so, this is how the first reading and the psalm are getting us ready for this Sunday, which is Rejoice Sunday. The church figures two weeks of fasting and getting ready. We need a little boost. And so we have this feast of the joy of expectation. You see, I'm going to just give you, we have just a time, an example. It comes from Jean-Paul Sartre, but it's pretty clever. There's two ways of waiting. There's a guy in a bar, and he's just waiting. He doesn't know what he, he's just waiting. Bored, stiff, drinking his beer, his whiskey. Another guy in the same bar is waiting for a friend to come. Two different kinds of waiting. Israel was waiting the second way. They had an idea of what they were waiting for. We're waiting in that second way squared. We know who we're waiting for. We've seen him. We felt him. We feed on his body and blood. And so we know. And so now this is Advent and we're waiting for this grace of the new presence of the Lord at Christmas. And so we sing Our Lady's song. <laughs> 